I'd like to welcome everyone to the GENTAC Aortic Summit 2020 and present a brief update on medical treatment of Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome has a, is a highly variable phenotypic expression with the cardinal feature of aortic root dilatation. The diagnostic criteria for Marfan syndrome has been updated in 2010 with more emphasis on the role for molecular testing. The AHH scientific statement paper on genetic testing for inherited cardiovascular diseases was published in July 2020 and provides an excellent summary on clinical aspects on genetic testing and emphasizes the important role of the genetic counselor. A major criteria for Marfan syndrome is the dilatation of the aortic root uh, and dissection of the ascending aorta. However, there are other cardiovascular involvements not uncommon and this includes a mitral valve prolapse, dilatation of the pulmonic artery, mitral annulus calcification, arrhythmias, and right ventricular enlargement. Sometimes it is difficult to separate Marfan syndrome from related disorders, particular from ectopia lentis syndrome, mass syndrome, mitral valve prolapse syndrome, and in few cases, the diagnosis remains uncertain. Aortic disease with aneurysmal dilatation, aortic regurgitation, and dissection is uh, central for medical and surgical treatment of Marfan syndrome uh, since it's the main cause of uh, mortality. Uh, there's a poor correlation between uh, severity of the cardiovascular uh, involvement and skeletal manifestation. Uh, also dilated, the aorta in Marfan syndrome tends to be stiffer and less distensible. Uh, dilatation of the aorta progresses over time uh, with uh, approximately 50% of children involved, and this increases to a 60 to 80% uh, involvement of the aorta in adults, patients with uh, Marfan syndrome. This age dependency of aortic dilatation is an important aspect for the clinical care for patients with inherited uh, aortic disease and the screening of their relatives. In this study, 119 uh, first and second degree relatives of seven families with inherited aortopathy in whom no underlying gene defect was detected um, were studied. 50% of family members were younger than 40, and in those only 9% had a dilated aorta. Uh, in contrast, in family members older than age 40, 57% had a dilated aorta. This really serves as a clinical primer that in uh, hereditary aortic disease, uh, younger family members who initially had a normal uh, aortic imaging need to have repeated imaging after the age uh, 40. Um, this is a study of whole exome sequencing in acute aortic dissection in 240 patients, and the pathogenic rare variant was identified in 24 patients, 10% uh, of the cohort. The majority of those rare variants were in uh, fibrillin 1, uh, and 12 of the 18 cases were not previously known. Uh, interestingly, if we compare the clinical characteristics of the patient with the pathogenic variant, uh, it is noticeable that those patients were significantly younger at the time of dissection. They had less prevalence of uh, hypertension, uh, less prevalence of uh, smoking, and there was more often a first degree relatives of aortic disease, particularly uh, in the mother, sibling, or, or child. This study allowed to examine the risk factors associated with dissections in cases with a pathogenic uh, variant, and age uh, was highly predictable. Patients with the age over 50 had a five-fold increased risk for dissection compared to patients younger than 50. Similarly, if patients had hypertension, there was a 5.6 fold increase for dissection compared to normal tensive patient. Uh, smoking as well as family history also increased uh, the risk for uh, dissection. So this study really emphasizes the importance of hypertension in patients with uh, pathogenic variants or in patients with Marfan syndrome. Uh, hypertension has been previously uh, recognized as a uh, strong risk factor in population-based studies, like the study uh, from Scotland, where 67% uh, of patients uh, who had dissections uh, had hypertension, and uh, many of them had poorly controlled hypertension. 
However, uh, up to date, we do not have any prospective clinical trials to test uh, whether treatment to a lower blood pressure target uh, reduces the risk for dissection in patients with thoracic aortic aneurysms. And the um, latest update of the hypertension guidelines uh, recommends beta blockers as the preferred uh, antihypertensive drug class in patients with hypertension and uh, thoracic aortic disease. And it recommends a similar blood pressure goal as uh, patients with other forms of hypertension. In my practice, we target a, a low normal uh, systolic blood pressure, uh, 115 to 125, and uh, the preferred use of a beta blocker, and also use uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, diuretic and calcium channel blockers uh, only if needed. Um, this study uh, was an important uh, update uh, in the last uh, year. The AIM study was published um, patients were randomized to herbicidin or placebo uh, and what was found is that the patients who received uh, herbicidin had a, a significantly reduced uh, increase in the aortic root diameter compared uh, to placebo treated patients and, and this um, benefit was seen in all subgroups uh, regardless of age, uh, gender, beta blocker use or uh, aortic z-score. Importantly, um, patients um, well, were all normotensive at the beginning of the study, systolic blood pressure around 110, and this increased in the patient on the placebo treatment to around 120 uh, over five years. Uh, this increase was prevented in patient allocated uh, to the herbicidin treatment. Herbicidin is a potent antihypertensive with a long half-life, so it is quite uh, possible that some of the beneficial effects that is seen on aortic uh, root growth in the herbicidin group uh, could be mediated by reduction in the hemodynamic uh, force, specifically by the reduction of uh, blood pressure. Um, other aspects of medical and cardiac surveillance in Marfan syndrome uh, includes uh, performance of annual or biannual echocardiography, um, annual or biannual imaging of the aorta or cardiac MI, uh, EKG. We obtain a halter and event monitors in patients with mitral valve prolapse or reduced ejection fraction. And then all aspects of preventive cardiology are important, specifically uh, screening with a lipid profile, uh, discussing of uh, smoking cessation, uh, as well as utilization of 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring if needed, and promoting of a heart-healthy diet. I'd like to spend some time uh, on the potential role of uh, influenza vaccine uh, in, in patients with aortic disease. Uh, our study showed a higher admission rate for type A aortic dissection uh, during influenza season. Um, we plotted uh, the, the admissions per month over the last 20 years and correlated this with a Michigan-specific um, influenza data. And we then strategized into uh, high flu activity months and yellow and low flu activity months. And you, we can see that there's approximately 30% more cases admitted um, during the high flu uh, season. Uh, and this is uh, independent of uh, temperature. Moreover, there was a higher post-op uh, mortality in patients with type A aortic dissection during the influenza season. And um, in hospital mortality, was almost double during the flu season as so in, in the 30-day mortality. Now, those data are just an association study. Uh, it's speculative to, uh, about the mechanism, uh, whether influenza could trigger aortic uh, dissection. There's more uh, research is, is needed to, to address this. But I would like to kind of end this session uh, with the notion that the influenza vaccine is underutilized. Uh, influenza vaccine is recommended by the CDC for everyone uh, six months and older, uh, as well as by the AHA and ACC. This is a class one indication for patients with atherosclerotic disease. There uh, was a recent paper in JAMA that showed that one third of patients with atherosclerotic disease did not receive the flu shot, uh, despite the strong evidence that the vaccine reduces the risk for myocardial infarction. And, and we have some uh, data that shows that patients with aortic aneurysms uh, received the flu shots at a significantly lower rate uh, compared to patients with other uh, cardiopulmonary uh, diseases. With this, I would uh, like to thank for your attention and uh, wish you a good rest of the meeting. Thank you.